fads and trends tend to run in cycles. Remember when topless bars were hot a generation ago, then suddenly bottomed out? Well now, it seems they're on the rise again. But this time, they've been spiffed and polished into new gentlemen's clubs. Are these so-called gentlemen's clubs no more than topless bars recycled? Do topless bars demean women? Does public nudity encourage men to go out and rape? Or are we making a mountain out of a molehill? We'll talk to our guest, Dr. Barbara Vaughn, a certified sex therapist. Mary Morton, director of programming for the Midwest Women's Center and immediate past president of the Chicago chapter of the National Organization for Women. And Jim Levin, owner of The Dow House, an upscale topless bar that recently opened in Chicago's River West area. I'm Monroe Anderson. Welcome to Common Ground. I park my car without the club I use my car every day I depend on it that's why I use the club all you do is slip it on the steering wheel extend it lock it up and go it only takes a couple of seconds I'm Captain Jack Cleric if you own a club use it if you don't buy one the club is an easy to use tough to defeat anti-theft device that's recommended by Operation Lockup as an effective, affordable deterrent to rising automobile thefts. Never park your car without the club, except no imitations. Make sure the anti-theft device you buy says the club on the handle. I never park my car without the club. I mean, why ask for trouble? The club is available at better stores everywhere. For over eight years, we've been building upscale custom homes in the western suburbs. Now our son law joined us, building more moderately priced homes. The same Kozlowski team has combined to build new homes starting at $195,000, including sites. Kozlowski homes feature quality carpet and tile from the Great Western Flooring Company, heard windows from Windmill Limited, and furnaces and AC from Tempound Incorporated. We'll guarantee you a home you'll be proud of. For a brochure, call 1-800-935-434. These glasses looked great, but they don't fit right. They're always slipping. Can lens crafters help? Yes, they're too big. You don't have to put up with glasses that don't fit anymore because lens crafters has your size. Lens crafters can fit your snug points comfortably because unlike other stores, all our frame styles come in a range of sizes and your glasses will be ready in about an hour. They look right and feel right because they're the right size. Now, lens crafters has lower prices for better value. Jim, you just opened an, an expensive, lavish, topless bar. I'm told that topless bars are on the rise again. They're becoming popular once more. Um, how much of that has to do with um, AIDS? I mean, would we see this if, if we didn't have AIDS? I think there's a large attribution to the fact that AIDS is, is a scare. AIDS is a huge presence now in our society. Definitely safe sex and sex in the 90s, people are aware of AIDS. I think this is definitely, there is much to be attributed to the fact that people are scared of AIDS and, and adult entertainment nightclubs, sophisticated adult entertainment nightclubs are on the rise due to this. Okay, well why sophisticated? If people are afraid, I mean, aren't, aren't um, isn't Joe Sixpack as afraid of AIDS as the um, average um, corporate executive? In the, in, the te in the mode of adult entertainment, in the mode of sophisticated adult entertainment, it's, it's separating it from the old stereotype of the topless bars or the old burlesque or the old B-joints as they were referred to. There's a, there's a definite distinction between this and the old days. There's a definite distinction of adult entertainment nightclubs now compared to B-joints of the past. 
to Mary as a as a feminist. Do you see any difference in, in the old bee, bee joints and the upscale places? Well, I, I think there's certainly a difference in presentation, without doubt, and that these um, clubs are much more sophisticated and they cater to a much higher level type of individual. Uh, the a gentleman, economically higher level. Exactly. Certainly a gentleman, a businessman. Um, but I think that basically it's sort of the same old story in, in different, you know, with a different book cover on it, basically. Um, I think women are still being put in the position of, of having to choose, in some cases, between making money, being economically um, sufficient, and going into work that objectifies them. I mean, I, I think that it, it still basically objectifies women. I think it, um, behavior happens in these clubs that is transferred into other places where it is totally inappropriate. I, like for the example, the workplace, where many women constantly, you know, complain about sexual harassment, about uh, pornographic photos, those kinds of things. So I think that it's different. Yes, it's a much more upscale. Hey, Dr. Vaughn, is, I mean, is that a problem? Uh, first of all, are, are women who work in these places being objectified, or, or do they do this willingly? And is it o is it okay to present oneself or think of well, oneself? I presume as a that they are doing it willingly. Yes. <laughs> are they sex objects? Indeed, they are, and. Uh, so whatever they're coming in with, they must be doing it voluntarily. They're not being forced to do it. Uh, the economic reasons may be there. They may also um, have some narcissistic need to show their body. Men do respond to visual stimuli faster and more often than women. Uh, there are studies to justify that. There's a, also an old study from Sweden suggesting that which had a very open uh, pornographic society uh, and uh, freedom in terms of nudity shows. And there was, uh, interestingly enough, rape went down during that time. Now, I don't know that that would apply to any other culture if it was specific to Sweden, but it was very interesting, I thought. It's the only thing I could really think of uh, in terms of a study, and it's a very old one. I don't know that it would apply to today at all. This sounds like a more sophisticated thing and there's there's been a tendency now your clubs uh, uh, around the country have been active you I believe you said for 10 years for and years. the audio visual uh, performance on television and telephones and clubs and so on has certainly been increasing in this time as people have uh, looked for alternative methods uh, in some cases to direct contact what this yeah. does to people who may have problems like compulsivity is something else but they would probably have the problems in any case okay let's go back to the the women there though and and all three of you can comment on this what if as a woman I like going and it, it turns me on to show my body off or then is there something terribly wrong with that I don't think there's anything terribly wrong with that, but I think this, this it makes a very sad statement about our society when women can get paid hundreds of dollars for taking their clothes off, but you have a child care worker who makes $12,000 a year. Where, where in our society, I mean, where are we placing our but, values? But Michael Jordan makes, uh, what, $30 million a year for Shoot playing a basketball it. game, and, and, and a, a professor at a college makes seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year. And, and Tom Kite just earned eight million dollars he just surpassed eight million dollar figure for putting a a ball in a hole but the reality I mean, is women are not treated equal in society they're not so what yeah. a man does and what a woman does is two different things and as we know from the recent uh, nomination processes um, a woman who was for one week you know training to be a playboy bunny had that brought up at this point in time in her life I don't think that would have happened to a man and I agree and I and I agree and I wish women were treated equally to men I agree wholeheartedly and, and to this day and age I wish that, and, and every every parent wishes for their children that life for them is a little better. And for my daughter, I wish that life is better for her as a woman. And this isn't exploitation But would you want your daughter to women. do this? It, hopefully, from a point, an economic point of view, she, she would never to. need to. And hopefully, what I'm able to do is provide them her a better life. And some of these girls will be able to provide their daughters and sons better lives, where they may not need this as an alternative. But for okay, someone wait who a wants minute, Jim. Now you sound like the Miss America <laughs> committee saying, saying that if, 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 if they could become Miss America and get these scholarships, it helps everybody. Is, like that, is that the same wants. argument you're using? No, you're not at all. Use? But what you're saying is, is that okay? If if you say that women shouldn't be allowed 
to do this by other women, by other men. They, they shouldn't be entertainers. They shouldn't make this kind of money. These women make more money than 90% of all men as well, not just women, 90% of men. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that, that these women shouldn't do this. Well, what is their alternative I'm not then? Saying should, that they they be, should they do something? If they don't have an alternative and they can't do anything else, then they have no means to justify their ends. What should they do then? Well, this I'm is not legal. Saying. Right. This is appreciated. Right. Since the pharaoh, since the beginning of time, women have been appreciated for their bodies. Their statues, there's pictures. But that's not all if you there go is. to the art institute, it's on the is, walls Jim. and it's art. But when you put it under lights and with music, then all of a sudden it's it's, it's something bad. But it's, and that's, that's something not all there that is. that's something that's really only to our society, only to American society. If you go to Europe, if you go to every other country, it's it's not like that. We have that stigma attached to sex. Mm -hmm. We have that stigma attached to women in our society. Going back to your original question. Well, I, I would disagree with you about your, I think you, you're getting into spotty areas there. Yes, there are some nudity beaches and there are special areas where it is nudity beaches only. But uh, each each country culture has its own unique right. uh, social many countries where it's far acceptances more accepted and so on. That's but I, I think your objection, the major one, I think everyone has a right uh, mm -hmm. to choose mm -hmm. their job. Um, and. Uh, without getting into the motives of why one would choose one job over another. There is the artistic point, but in our country, we're also dealing with exploitation so much right. of children and women and men in terms of viewing them for their sexuality and looking at them from as sensational objects rather than human beings with feelings and, and right. whole human beings and being treated as objects. So. If I understand you, you're saying yeah. that this kind of phenomenon is you know encouraging what, that. It that does sounds, that sounds wonderful in, this in theory, country, though, but in real life, let's be honest, in real life, that doesn't work on a day-to-day -day basis. In theory, you can go and you can cure homelessness. In theory, we can get rid of AIDS. In theory, we can, we can have politicians that do wonders for us. Yeah. But not everybody in this country wanted Bill Clinton as president. Not everybody didn't. There's people who do and people who don't. There's people who want everything and, and don't want everything. If you could, in theory, cure everything, then everything would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay, but wait, wait, that wait, is okay. realism. Now, <laughs> we're going to take a commercial break, and then we're, we will get away from the theories for a second and talk about, um, say, what's wrong with just sex? I mean, people go into a place to because they get turned on and take a look at it. Let's we'll have them talk about that when we come back. We'll be back. my car without the club I use my car every day I depend on it that's why I use the club all you do is slip it on the steering wheel extend it lock it up and go it only takes a couple of seconds I'm Captain Jack Cleric if you own a club use it if you don't buy one the club is an easy to use tough to defeat anti-theft device that's recommended by Operation Lockup as an effective, affordable deterrent to rising automobile thefts. Never park your car without the club. Accept no imitations. Make sure the anti-theft device you buy says the club on the handle. I never park my car without the club. I mean, why ask for trouble? The club is available at better stores everywhere. Make your next home at beautiful Lake Barrington Shores a place for all seasons. Lake Barrington Shores condominiums and townhomes have the added value of being quality-built good sense homes designed for energy efficiency to keep you warm in the winter, cool in the summer. Many of these homes feature lake and golf course views. Priced from just $162.6, you'll find that Lake Barrington Shores offers you a lifestyle you're sure to enjoy in any season. For a brochure, call Lake Barrington Shores at 1-800-935-4949. My glasses drive me crazy. They're always slipping at the wrong time. They never stay where I put them. You don't have to put up with glasses that don't fit anymore. Because at LensCrafters, we have so many ways to fit your snug points. With features like snug fit hinges that flex to keep their lasting fit. And your glasses will be ready in about an hour. How's that? Real secure. 
comfortable glasses that keep their fit. Now, Lens Crafters has lower prices for better value. Okay, we're back talking about topless bars. Okay, Jim, this is what we were, we were, we were going to discuss. What is wrong with my going to a place if I like to look at naked women, and these naked women like to perform for men like me that like to look at them? If, what, where's the sin? What's wrong with I it? I don't see it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're asking the wrong person. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong person. No, I think the problem is, though, that men and women, again, as I said, aren't treated equally. So it, it would be one thing for a, a woman to go in, and if she wasn't, quote, unquote, put on a pedestal, women don't want to be put on a pedestal. They want to be treated equally. I mean, I think that's the well, big point they were missing. Yeah. Yeah. Some women, and I hope most women, feel that way, but I think not all women do. And in answer to your question about... Uh, but you know, one of the things that's most irritating to women when they are with a man is that the man is constantly looking at other images, yeah. <laughs> particularly other female yeah. images. And it's something that women feel very frustrated about, often very jealous, but what they're really feeling is, you must prefer to be with someone else instead of me. Well, mm -hmm. men do respond visually. Well, more but, 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 but as a women, man, okay, and it's but, very satisfying. Right, to them. okay, but as a man, why can't it be that I would prefer to be with you and her and her, or, or at least in, in frame of reference or mine or something like that? I hear like men that. say that all the time, and I believe you. But all I'm telling you is it's one of the greatest complaints that I hear from women. I don't think mm -hmm. men and women fully appreciate the differences and timing of arousal. <laughs> in sexuality and the differences between the sex. The, the man can go to but What does that have to do with a, a, a place like this? What does that have to do with a sophisticated, up, upscale, adult entertainment nightclub? It, it's it's, it's, it's okay, not no, even about the individual, I mean, this, this particular place. It would be somewhat challenging if, if a woman went there with her male, or I presume There's many women that do come. Okay, Jim, now, let, let me ask you this. This may be the problem with it, is that these women, and I, I went to visit your club before doing this show just, just to see what it was like. These women are so, uh, I mean, they're very nicely in good physical shape and everything. They are idealized bodies almost. The average woman is not shaped like that, is not in That's that right. condition. And I think what it does is it, it, it first of all, establishes an unrealistic, um, standard for That's beauty right. Right. and a lot of these women I don't know about the women at your club but you read stories all the time about these models being um, anorexic or bulimic, bulimic exactly. or taking laxatives to, to, to maintain this unnatural state per state of perfection <laughs> shall we say and I, was, I mean isn't something wrong with Does, that doesn't everybody in their own way strive for some sort of perfection in their life whether it be with their physical body, with their looks. Why do women wear makeup? Why do they wear perfume? Everybody wants to better themselves for the opposite sex or for themselves, most importantly. So why is there a limit of how far you can go? Why why are you well, put when, boundaries even when you on put how your good health you at risk? Look? Even well, if when you put your health no, at risk? No, I'm not condoning that, and I don't know any of the, of the entertainers that work for us who have any of those but problems. But that's part of the, that. the argument that. That, that's been presented here tonight, that perhaps people are going there for their health's sake rather than having direct contact. They're more into visual and auditory stimulation. Rather, I'd like to turn, I think it's very difficult for women to speak for men or vice versa. I'm not very happy about it when men speak for women's responses. Let me ask the two of you, what, what is so attractive and what is so satisfying about seeing nude women dance for you? And that was a very interesting phrase. Are they dancing for you? Are they dancing for themselves? But the thought is they are dancing for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, what is so yeah, attractive first about all, that? First of all, there's no nudity here. Okay, so let's clear that up. There's no nudity whatsoever. Well, technically speaking. I mean, <laughs> no, 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 seriously. You go, you go, to, go, you go to, to the Dow House and they have G-strings on. Well, you mean and, legally. And they, there's legally, no there's no nudity. nudity. And, right. and they are topless, except they have a little because you can't serve booze. Tell me if I'm wrong. You can't serve booze and have nudity in Chicago. Correct. So they... They're sort of painted, a little paints on their breasts, but uh, 
Um, Stevie Wonder could see through that, so, uh, yes. Well, yeah, <laughs> but got back to my question. Yes. What is, uh, what is so satisfying for men I, I can't about speak this? for a woman. All I can speak for is a man, a man, this man at least, <laughs> loves, loves women, loves the idea of a woman, loves the shape of a woman, loves the scent of a woman, loves everything about women. Um, there's enough gentlemen that come into this club that, are, that want that contact with that beautiful woman. That doesn't mean that it's going to cause any infidelity in their life. That doesn't mean it's going to do anything. It's a fantasy. They come in for that fantasy and they leave with that fantasy. Mm -hmm. And fantasy or imagination or stimuli of that fantasy or imagination that is I very think healthy. That's your key. I, I would guess mm -hmm. that's the key. I, I think and that's, that's all probably this guy very well. Mm -hmm. And it's very healthy. Oh, but I think well, these kind of clubs help to <laughs> these kind of clubs help to perpetuate the problems that many women are dealing with in terms of self-esteem because they're, as Monroe said, trying to work up to this idealized, you know, thing of beauty. I mean, this is what you're saying is beautiful. This is what someone will pay to see. Well, men is, will pay to see these women. This has started since the beginning of time. This is the, I have not reinvented the I wheel here. I understand that. I, but, you're, but you help to perpetuate it. If you go to a movie, <laughs> if you go to a movie and you go to see, you see Michelle Pfeiffer, you see, you see any of these beautiful I actresses, they're not up there because they're all the most talented actresses mm -hmm. in the world, all, many of them are, mm -hmm. a lot of them are up there because they're very beautiful. And that's what's appealing and that what, that's what brings millions of people to the theater. The same for women. There's beautiful men. There's Mel Gibson. There's Sylvester Stallone. They may not be necessarily the best actors in the world, okay, but they're yeah, very appealing. But again, right. Okay, let's go to the Chippendales guess, now. Okay. You, you have a situation where women pay to come see these men who are these great physical shape or what have you. I mean, that's that um, equality you were talking about. Yes or no, Mary? Well, it's equality that, yes, men and women are doing it, but the reality is men and women aren't on the same level in the society. So no matter what women do, they're so, generally, so they're not going to so, be So, so you're telling me that men, can't, men, men should be ashamed of, of no. looking at women no. and appreciating their bodies until we're on equal levels but I'm saying that socially or something? We have occupational segregation in this country, and as long as a woman still is making 70 cents for every dollar that a man makes, and that's right. European-American women, not African-American women, um, then I think, yes, you cannot talk about gender parity and, and, and those kinds of issues. Women just aren't treated the same way, as I said. Okay, Any of those Chippendale dancers, no one is going to look back 20 years and say, oh my God, you're a Chippendale dancer. You can't be considered for the attorney general position. They're not going to do it. And, and I would say that the that's objection that on the both sides that you mentioned earlier is the fact that these people are objects rather than being viewed as people. They, it's uh, the only way you can really describe it is as uh, entertainment. That's and all it is. It's, it's entertainment a, and it's a release. It's object relationship. You come there for two hours, you come there for But there are larger societal implications. I mean, I mean, if, if, if mm -hmm. I... I mean, you know, I, I know a lot of men who would love to be sex objects to women. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they would work, they work at that all the time, and they like the concept. So, I mean, is the, is the idea of being a sex object in and of itself wrong or sick or something like that? Well, I think men are more comfortable, obviously, with that idea because men are raised to think of themselves as being sexual beings all the time, and they're in very much encouraged to think in object relationships. They're inclined and, and often our culture encourages them to think more sensuous than they do feeling. And that's often a big problem for men in our, our uh, particular society. That, that's, that's within every boundary of every part of our society, from advertising yes, I in agree. every business. Calvin Klein, um, perfumes, agree. everything. Everything is guided towards that basic instinct mm -hmm. within everybody, which mm -hmm. we all possess, mm -hmm. men and women alike. Me as a man, Jim, I don't feel threatened. Jim, we have about 45 seconds left. Mm -hmm. Tell me why you opened this club to begin with. I mean, the, the basic reason in the beginning was economical. I'm an op entrepreneur. I had a nightclub that wasn't succeeding or giving me the return ratio that I wanted. This is the number one industry right now. I wanted to take a nightclub that wasn't giving the proper return and turn it around to an, an entertainment business, the adult entertainment business, which is the number one, a multi-billion dollar business, and it's proved to be the proper decision. So basically the bottom line is it, it's a money-making venture. Absolutely. Speaking of which, we've got to go to commercial. <laughs> home at
at beautiful Lake Barrington Shores, a place for all seasons. Lake Barrington Shores condominiums and townhomes have the added value of being quality built good sense homes, designed for energy efficiency to keep you warm in the winter, cool in the summer. Many of these homes feature lake and golf course views. Priced from just $162.6, you'll find that Lake Barrington Shores offers you a lifestyle you're sure to enjoy in any season. For a brochure, call Lake Barrington Shores at 1-800-935-4949. park my car without the club. I use my car every day. I depend on it. That's why I use the club. All you do is slip it on the steering wheel, extend it, lock it up and go. It only takes a couple of seconds. I'm Captain Jack Cleric. If you own a club, use it. If you don't, buy one. The club is an easy-to-use, tough-to-defeat anti-theft device that's recommended by Operation Lockup as an effective, affordable deterrent to rising automobile thefts. Never park your car without the club. Accept no imitations. Make sure the anti-theft device you buy says the club on the handle. I never park my car without the club. I mean, why ask for trouble? The club is available at better stores everywhere. For over eight years, we've been building upscale custom homes in the western suburbs. Now our son law joined us, building more moderately priced homes. The same Kozlowski team has combined to build new homes starting at $195,000, including sites. Kozlowski homes feature quality carpet and tile from the Great Western Flooring Company, custom stairways from designed stairs, and durable siding from Cedar Components. We'll guarantee you a home you'll be proud of. For a brochure, call 1-800-935-4343. Okay, the one thing I don't think we got to and nobody quite answered is, is what Jim is doing wrong, having women, half-naked women up on a stage dancing. Should he cease and desist or what? No. I think it's, well, and that's why she would say that. I think it's exploitative and I think it contributes to issues that women suffer uh, in society at large. And so I have a problem with it. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't think I can say it's right or wrong for him to be in business. He's trying to make some money. Dr. Women are Vaughan. trying to get jobs. <laughs> Well, right and wrong is very subjective. Mm -hmm. It's not illegal, and um, as long as it's not um, a woman's free choice and she's being well paid, I think that she has a right to do that, so therefore I don't think it's wrong. The scary part is in areas like pornographic films, there's been such exploitation, not just of, of the appreciation. Now you can catch the Illinois Lottery drawings live, only during the 10 o'clock news, only on Channel 2 and nowhere else. You've got to be there. The next live's going to sizzle. Ooh. Lorenzo Lamas, Corbin Bernson, Rob Lowe, and Fabio on the next live. Monday morning at 9, only on Channel 2. Today's game, sponsored locally in part by BMW, by CarX. Your local Ford dealer is a participating advertiser. Which car outsells Saturn, Geo, and every other car in its class? That's easy. Ford Escort. Which car has more repeat buyers than Mazda, Toyota? And every other car in its class? Ford Escort. Which car has fewer reported problems than both Honda and Nissan? Ford Escort. They're built right the first time. And now Escort's easier to buy. Four models, one price. All well-equipped, all ready for delivery. See your local Ford dealer today. Escort's the best car we've ever owned. I'd go back to cars. We only fix what needs fixing. You bet they'll get me back. We'll show you what's wrong and what's right. I'd go back to CarX. At CarX, we know there are dozens of places you can go for brakes, shocks, exhaust repairs. For sure, CarX will get me back. We're going to give you just what you need at a great price. Because we want to be the one you go back to. Yeah, I'd go back. CarX will get me back. Rattle, rattle, thunder, clatter, boom, boom, boom. Don't worry, call the CarX man. You're witnessing a highly sophisticated conversation. It's between the BMW 325i and the driver. It's not based on the language of words, but of feelings. How the wheel feels to the fingertips. How the pedals feel to the foot. How the seat feels to the body. But what's truly amazing isn't that this entire conversation took place in just two points.